Welcome to Reasoning Sessions. I'm your host, Malik Mohammed, and this week, as always, we have creative, intelligent persons. People whose minds I admire, persons that I love to spend time with. This week, we have Oneness Sankara, creative consultant among many other talents. Courtney Winston, actor par excellence, a man who is currently featured in Antwerp Dolls, you must see that film, Plug is Deliberate, and of course, Joelle Taylor, Slam Busters UK, co-founder and a woman who truly has a passion for words and for inspiring young people and inspiring the globe. One is Courtney, Joelle. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome pleasure. to Reasoning Sessions. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's good to be here. And as you know, as we're talking off camera, the vicissitudes of life are such that we have to always strive to get into the zone and mm. be fully present. You know, and with what's happening in the world just now, it makes me wonder sometimes how, as creative people, you're able to stay true to your craft. You know, when we look at the situation in Austria right now, we're based in the United Kingdom. And the whole situation now with border controls. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have any views on that, inter whether it be creative or otherwise? Borders are artificial. They are artificial. created. Birds mm -hmm. don't see borders. Animals yes. don't see borders. We created them, in yes. my opinion, and we created them for reasons of power and greed. Mm -hmm. To contain certain people and certain people to benefit from it. And, I mean, I said to someone recently, like, you know, we should open our borders. This is an island. We were speaking about it earlier. It's an yeah, yeah. island. Yeah, yeah. It exists economically. It can only develop if people come in and people go out. It's got mm -hmm. to have flow. And that goes for the whole of the world, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And I know it's naive, but I am a poet. I am naive. I have worked really hard to retain my naivety and idealism. Because, yeah, people are dying. Yeah. They are literally 60 million people, 60 million displaced. And they're not just all mincing down, hoping to get a Rolex watch, you know, mm -hmm. from Covent Garden. They are looking to breathe and to eat. Mm -hmm. So that's my feelings about it. And we will find a way, yes. find a way. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, in terms of the border situation, yes. immigration, <coughs> that whole subject matter, um, it's a case of uh, England throwing stones at <laughs> us. <laughs> Because if you look at the history mm -hmm. of England, right. they didn't have that border-like mm -hmm. mentality when they went to Australia, yeah. Africa, mm -hmm. India, China, the Americas. Yes. They went to conquer nine-tenths of the planet. Mm -hmm. And with that, they have amassed wealth, they have amassed uh, a great economy. Mm -hmm. You know, the pound, as we know today, the sterling pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, they're, they're t on top of the hill, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying to everyone, oh, well, you know, you can't come into this country, our country, but Great Britain, Great mm -hmm. Britain was made great as a result of colonizing and enslaving mm -hmm. other nations and taking away from other, from other uh, people. Yes. And now those people have been displaced. They have nothing left after war. We've ripped right. everything from this them. Yeah. They have no, it's, like, it's like me going to someone's house, taking mm -hmm. all their goods, yeah. mm -hmm. kicking them out of their house, and then I go back to my big castle and the next minute, I get up and I go, oh, can you give me a little, not your front room, not your bedroom, but can I have a little small part in your house, please? Yeah. Um, no, we're going to have to have some controls over here. No, we know we've done you wrong in your home, but uh, just wait there. We have to yeah, process. but see, that's more of an acknowledgement that's mm. actually given. I yeah. don't think, um, even, yeah. I don't, I don't think um, Britain, I don't think Europe turns around and says, we know you did, we did you wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We start yeah. at the symptom. You see what I mean? And we yes. don't go, we never, we never go to the, to the root. So once you started to speak about actually how were borders, a lot of these borders created in yeah. the first place, and yeah. as you yes. said, they were created mm. for other people's benefits, mm. out of greed, yeah. out of wealth, et cetera, et cetera. So you have got people living right next to each other. There's mm. an artificial border, they're the same people, but now they don't believe they're the same. Yeah. yeah. And that border benefits people that aren't even directly in the situation. Mm. So I think that we need to start looking at, hold on a minute, what, what's, what's the root of this? Yes. Why are people seeking asylum? Mm. You know, <coughs> why, are the, why are they knocking at your door? Why are mm. they displaced? Why are people dying? Mm. And then I think that, because you have to go to the root. I don't mm -hmm. see why, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. you can, you know, okay, yeah, you can put a, a, a plaster, but every minute your arm bleeding, yeah. you've got to it's deal with too. why is your arm bleeding? Yeah. So why, why would you all think like that? The, um, 
the, the, you know, this current humanitarian crisis, as we're calling it, the refugee crisis, what yes. was the cause of that mm. in recent mm. times? I mean, it seems quite clear mm. that we had this whole conflict, just like we created the terrorists that we're fighting with. Mm. The whole mm. thing is yeah. created, but like, why? Mm. What's the purpose? That's what unnerves me, really. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, a child of immigrants. My yes. parents are from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, they were sold the idea, my grandparents were sold the idea of come mm -hmm. to Mother England, mm -hmm. uh, the land of Five Northern years. Island, where you can come and work, serve Queen and country. This is after World War II. Yes, uh, yes. yes. Uh, we'll give you homes. You can just come over with a three to five year plan and then go back to the Caribbean. And my granddad was like, yeah, sure. Come back to, come to Mother England, serve Mother England. Okay. And they stayed, and they stayed, <laughs> and they're still here now, mm. 50 years on. So um, it's this, this whole lie mm. that England or Great Britain has sold to everybody that, you know, come to mother country to help, but then mother country can't give anything back to its babies. Mm. You know, so it's, uh, there's a large amount of reparation that needs to be given to uh, those who have worked. And by the way, I've read um, statistics saying that there's, a, there's an argument saying that, oh, all of these foreigners, mm. Eastern Europeans, Polish, whatever, are taking all of our jobs. But in fact, the statistics say that those people who come here have actually increased the economy. Of course. And added to the economy. Mm. So what is the real problem? I, I'm, I'm actually looking at this and I'm thinking, what's the divide and rule? And mm. the divide and conquer mm. that has been set up? amongst the people because if you can separate Muslims from Christians from Catholics yeah. from straight people to yeah. homosexual people and put yeah. everybody squabbling against mm. each other yes then it will then give way to perhaps another agenda exactly that these ruling parties have and that's what I'm looking at really it's, for me it's like the rise of fascism I think what's most terrifying at a time of need when we <clears throat> all need to stand together and every human I meet including you know, kids in pupil referral centres. Yes. I was in Belmarsh Prison, which yes. they were describing as a jihadi yes. training ground. Wow. Believe me, the men in Belmarsh want biscuits and cups of tea. Seriously. <laughs> you know, all of that makes you wonder, like, what is, what is the ulterior motive? And at a time when people are good, everyone I meet is a good person, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So how come we're all fighting? There, there can only be a rise of fascism coming in more oppression of us mm. we're all getting more and more boxed and these borders are not mm. about keeping refugees out it's mm. about keeping us in our places I, I as well you know mm. i blame the media i blame the news mm. print media really? social media i blame um <laughs> electronic media. i blame any anywhere where people are giving attention to information where they are now telling us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is that that's what's going on that's what's happening in this world given our perspective mm. i i hold those people responsible and it's the, the corporations that control the media that are in control of our news. Well, this is it. So then, therefore, <coughs> are, are the actual... Because the media is the medium. Mm, Do you see what right. I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't actually... Yeah. Um, it, it manages the flow of information and where it goes. But in terms of the, 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 the initial spark, doesn't actually come from... You know, I think it was... Um, there's a rapper by the name of Immortal Technique mm. who describes media as a wing of the government yeah. Absolutely. you know as yeah. an actual yeah. branch yeah. Of, of, of government you know yeah. because it's not um you know i think that things like social media like facebook etc cetera, etc cetera, has certain pluses in mm -hmm. terms of the ordinary person can speak mm -hmm. do you know what i mean i mean to, yeah. a, to, to a degree do you know what i mean speak too hard and your account get, get yeah. account. <laughs> do you know what i mean but there's still but yeah. there is that that thing whereby something can happen i can film it yeah. And it can go out. And everybody knows. Do you see what and I people mean? People can respond. Yeah. And so there's like there's less hiding and I think that's why we're seeing more and more ads pop up on our Facebook. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. More and more of that mm -hmm. type of control mm -hmm. because it is about basically controlling people's paradigm. Yes. Controlling how yes. people um, see the world exactly you know right. exactly so you only know what you think from following a news feed yeah you know i'm like oh, everyone's lovely yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but i got somebody else i've like, oh maybe not you know <laughs> but it there is that so do you think we're talking about like a new colonialism which is corporate corporation corporate colonialism oh yeah i mean definitely i think we're, we're, we're in it i don't think mm. you know uh colonialism ended i think it changed form yeah you know yeah. um you know this is it because i think that 
when you when you when you start off and it's just unequal yeah you don't even know how to play a fair game true so you've always got to go okay how can i tip the balance how can i tip the balance because I can't do it. I don't, I don't even have a reference point yeah. for how do we do this where, you know, each has according to their needs and each, no, no, no. It's, it, it's about how do we keep <laughs> this um, economic superiority? Yeah. Okay. You know, mm. how do we, how do we remain? And, mm. so, you know, now it's, it's, it's corporations. Mm. You know, I'm intrigued by what you mentioned about the quote from Immortal Technique and about the media being the medium. And I know that for, your, for, for yourselves as creative mm. persons, how important is it for you to tell your story your way? You know, is freedom of speech a myth? Can you really express what you truly feel? Yeah. Well, I was just at the um, T-Junction International Poetry Festival and yes. I was on a panel. It was fascinating. So I was with, um, I won't say their names, but I was a guy from, who was in the siege of Sarajevo, a, guy, a poet from Palestine, a poet from Syria, from Latvia, from the Ukraine, so a lot of countries. And we were all talking That's about the same thing. Mm. How do you retain freedom of speech mm. when you know, you are under attack, you're under assault, you're in a war zone. And they talked a lot about, yeah, well, I would write by candlelight. I, I know how to make um, candles out of my shoelaces. And wow. it's really dramatic. And I was listening to all this and I was like, yeah, yeah. And they said, and then, you know, I got the work and I passed it out through the borders and it came to England, they published it. And then I, and I was like, hold up. So already you've mentioned quite a lot of um, gatekeepers within this process. Mm -hmm. So there is freedom of speech like we're talking right now, yeah. but without you, mm. we wouldn't be reaching any kind yeah, of an kind audience. Of yeah. Once you get into the publishing world or the record business, once you start releasing things, then you've got all your gatekeepers. And in my world, the publishing world is very clear about mm. uh, it. Freedom of speech is not free. It's quite expensive, you know. Yes. So I think for me, the only real freedom of speech, I'm from a spoken word scene, which in my opinion is being... Um, is under kind of threat at the moment be because we've attracted really? the attention of the big businesses and we are having celebrities coming from our scene, which is amazing and I hold I nothing but love for them. But it does mean that people are looking at us and so how we used to be able to have little revolutions in, in little places, yes. you know, and these personal transformations is kind of being more monitored, I guess. Well, and we're all responding to it, like, oh, maybe that, I need to write something like that, be because that's going to get me more popular or well, whatever. Let's look at the, the history of China yes. and Chairman Mao, uh, you yes. know, and uh, the Cultural Revolution, so yes. to speak. Yes. So I see myself, in terms of a spoken word artist and actor, um, we've, me and my colleagues, filmmakers, we've had struggles to get distribution deals mm. to get our film yeah. on a international stage yeah where we could be on par with these movies or i should say rehashes and remakes that you see coming <laughs> yeah out. yeah uh, so um, we, yes. you know we, we've had to travel finance our own film yes. shoot our own film obviously and finance ourselves travel overseas and we get more love overseas than here in england mm. where only a few of the elite upper class Acting, mm. or acting or uh, uh, producing community yes. are keeping it amongst themselves, that nepotism kind of, yeah. you know, keep it amongst themselves. So we like, okay, we're not going to rely on this community over mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. we're going to travel overseas mm -hmm. and we're getting more love like that. Yeah. So we're finding that we're winning crowds that way. It's very important, going back to the question that Malik asked, it's very important that our story is told in spoken word, in rap form and in visual form, mm. film, so that we can Ideals are, have always been spread through spoken word, mm. book form, form and film, yes. always. And you'll find, uh, again, the revolution, the cultural revolution, mm. which we're about, has to be done through these art, has to be done through art form, forms, mm. not just through academia or being awarded certificates from universities, like a big sleeping pill, but the freedom of creating mm. your work, which speaks to the time. Mm. So you can create a cultural revolution with young people, especially. Mm -hmm. And we've had we've had a, a struggle as actors uh, waiting on others to finance mm. us, but we have to do it for ourselves. So I think it's that do for self mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, take yeah, the yeah, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Wonders. think it's. Um, I think okay. I think there's a basic premise that you know the. <clears throat> Like the end of the story is that the truth wins. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Any, you know, any Bible, whatever, yeah. you know, good triumphs. Mm. And so in that vein, you know, the rose is always going to grow through the concrete. It's yeah. going to, that's going to happen. And so um, 
irrespective, I mean, the circumstances that you were talking about, you know, people having to write by candlelight and smuggle their work out, etc. Mm. But I think that there's this innate divinity, miracle, blessing energy that exists, mm. um, that artists are able to um, tap into, yeah. whether we view it as a blessing mm. or a curse. Mm. But it's something that, that completely drives us. So I feel like the Absolutely. stories will be told, yeah. you know? The stories will be told. Um, and then there's the external circumstances, like the industry, from distributors to publishers, etc., yes. who have um, their own agendas. But I think it's really important for us to remember that actually, like, what we do was written before we even, before we even came, you know? Yeah. Like, mm. the, the, and there is a purpose. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I know I sound like I'm in the middle of a, a superhero novel right now, but I think that it's, it's such an important, such an important role that we do reflect the times, you know, mm. that we do tell the stories that our spirit wants to tell. We, yeah. do, we, we are that mouthpiece for those that can't do it. And it's, and it's not easy. It's not an easy scenario because, mm. you know, if when you are, I, I used to um, act um, and, you know, then I didn't, you know, I didn't see a space for myself in the acting, you know, mm. industry. I was like, okay, you know, cool, I might get to play a prostitute or um, I might get to, you know, talk about, oh, Lord, my son gets shot and stabbed <laughs> by whoever can and whatever. But, you know... <laughs> it, but it's like, that, <laughs> not actually it? funny. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, th there was this, like, you know, there, it, so for me it was a bit of a rap and then I found spoken word mm. and I was like, what? I speak my own words and do my own characters and say yeah. what I want to say, etc. Yeah. You know, and saying what you want to say doesn't always make you popular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, but we're all here for a purpose. Yeah. And and I believe in that purpose. And, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so yeah, so I think freedom of speech. Yeah. Depending on who you are, you know, if you're Donald Trump or whatever. <laughs> You can say what you want. If you're Farrakhan, you can't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, it depends on it depends on who you are in, in the big. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Who is owning the media that that's promoting your speech? You know. But uh, you I mean you touch on the spoken word community, and this is something I know. I have been an actor as well, mm, and I've yes. set up theatre companies, and I came from theatre in particular. Okay. I've been a performance poet in the in what was called a performance poet then back in the eighties mm. when there was only me and Jules. When I was a kid, Jules was um, this kind of punk woman poet. We were the only women we knew of in the country doing this kind of thing. Um, so I came from that environment, got into theatre, wrote plays. And then it takes so long. For a start, it takes you a long time to write the play, then a long time to convince people to be in it, then a long time to get someone to... Then a theatre, and you're going on and on, you're like that. You start it at 13, your play goes out when you're 32. You know, it's long. And then um, during this process, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to take a bit of this and I'm going to get up on a stage, five minutes, just do it. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I love about spoken word, it's immediacy. You with the theatre no, and no. the filming, yeah. the amount, the length of yeah. time, your tenacity and focus oh, yeah. over that period. Yes. Yes. Whereas it feels, one of the, I mean, I've been negative about spoken word scene, about the threats, but actually... It's still my favourite place on the whole planet in any country to go to is that vibrant mm. place where anything can happen. Yeah. I've got a confession to make. I mean, I, Confess. Before Confess. I was an actor, I started off as one that knows. Um, I started off as a spoken word artist. There you go. Yeah. Um, when I got kicked out of my mother's house when I was 17 mm. and I was doing madnesses on the street and whatnot, my escape was writing yeah. Yeah. the stories of my experiences as a 17 year old being in a hostel with other young guys in there mm. some of us you know you know we're on the street doing whatever we're doing we get together we write our stories and that's, yeah. I, mean, I love this wow. it's very therapeutic like, yeah. to yes. write about your stories yes. Yes. express yes. yourself yes. and so that developed from reading writing to mm. performing the poetry, yeah. mm. wow. and then uh, trying to sing as well, but I was like, no, I'll just stick to reading <laughs> it and saying yeah. it, and it was so therapeutic just to be able to release that, yes. and it was therapy for the audiences mm. listening as well, yeah. wow. and that's why the creative industries is one of the most powerful mm. industries, or lucrative industries, in the whole world, because yeah. whoever controls that industry, you control the mind of oh, the people. Yeah, the dominant mm. cultural narrative, yeah. exactly. the way we're thinking, the way we're feeling, Exactly, and that's why the artists were very important. 
And so my evolution, my journey from okay. being, to being an actor yes. was started as a spoken word artist, and I'm still a spoken word artist as well. Yeah. You know, so um, it's, it's true what you said in terms of the, uh, the process of filmmaking. It's, I yeah, mean, the film, film that I've just finished doing, Antwerp Dogs, yes. it's taken a very, very long time to finish it completely. And that's it. It can, it, can, it can break you, those kind of things. My novel, writing the novel, I started in 1995. Wow. 1995. I, don't, I think I was in a different incarnation then. I was, <laughs> wasn't even in a lifetime. But, mm. And then the, it's, its newest form since I finished it in 2013. It's 2016 now. Three years. Oh. I've been going like that with the agent and, yeah. you know, going back and forth yeah. and back and forth. Spoken word, you're free. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've got that. I've got projects that, you know, are ongoing. I've got projects that haven't come out. You know, you've actually gone yeah. through the whole of writing, composing, doing the yeah. whole project. Yes. And it's in the vault. Prince. <laughs> Prince says the same thing. He's got about, I know that Prince has got, no Nuts. exaggeration, 200,000. Mm. Wow. Unused. Unused. It is bought. So like, it's the stuff we will write, mm -hmm. novels, books, mm -hmm. poems, that may never come out, you know, but again, the, the mind is unlimited. But then I think about our poetry and all our art as like one big poem. So you mm. write something and then a couple of years later, I may not have even heard it, but I'm adding yeah. to it, then you're picking yeah. it up and then Malik's picking it up. Yeah. And then we work with young people and our microphone comes yeah. like a baton in a relay race and we're, we're trying to encourage yeah. their words as well and their truths to come yeah. out. Um, and like social media is a real space for freedom of speech, but I, except for today, I don't use it to tell the truth because people scare me on there. I don't want to get in some long, dry yeah, yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because, yeah, oh, because people, are, people are brave behind the keyboard. Yes. <laughs> behind the keyboard. Right? Yeah. yeah, they are brave. Oh, yeah. Anonymity is a yes. something, boy. Yes. Like, you know, and, you do, and it's like, some, I'll, I'll see stuff, like, because I think I am, I am, a lot more mindful now on social media and it's not so much about telling the truth it's what energy do I want to do, do, do I want to spread do I want to share yeah, so sometimes there is something that's in, and it's a way up between going all right this is important and people need to know about it but also what, what what's the story what's the reverberation what's being because sometimes you put something up and then everyone's like, wah, 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 and it's just like, like conjures ooh. up this, yeah. this, this stuff. <laughs> like, Do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, and then like, yeah. blah, 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 and then you know, like, yeah. you, know, you know, I know some people, and they are just they're fabulous, and they will go on and they will draw for the history books and the quotes and mm. really educate yeah. people. Yeah, fam, it's not my bag. Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> I wasn't born with with that level of resolve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I just yeah. end up wanting to just put expletives. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> So, Read a book. So it's, <laughs> so it's like, where do you go? You know, the, the beautiful thing is, you know, you're all very talented people, right? And I'm just wondering, what impact do you want your work to have on the world? <laughs> what impact do you want your work to have on the world? Um, I think I want people to open their hearts. Mm. I'm just going to say the same. Mm. Yeah. I want people to open their hearts. Um, sometimes your heart has to break open, mm. you know, mm. wow. um, but that's it, you know, and so sometimes the way that will come out in the work will be like, bang, yeah. and other times it will be something else, yeah. you know, but ultimately I think that is the, that's the end game, you know, okay. that's the end game that we are living and operating from a space of love. Yeah. Okay. I want people to yeah. remember themselves, yeah. you know. Um, we talk a lot in spoken word about authenticity, mm -hmm. and increasingly, because this is a private conversation, I'm yes. seeing the people who are talking about authenticity as very white, upper middle class kind yes. of people, yeah. and they're just like, wow, it's so authentic. Do you mean working class? Is that what you mean? <laughs> that what you mean? Yes. Um, but I want people to remember themselves, mm -hmm. and that, part of that is their hearts, mm -hmm. a huge part. And politics is mm -hmm. about opening their heart and mm -hmm. their energy forces to kind of... Mm -hmm. Um, remembering who we all are, yes. remembering mm. yourself, and, and I want people to be able to hear something and write something, or in whatever form, it may not be like a poem, it might mm. just be, I'm going to play some guitar today, mm. I'm going to play with my kid, mm. I'm going to do something, create, mm. I'm going to tackle this problem in a mm. creative way. You know? Yes, mm. I think in my, from, I, from, I believe, uh, what I'm getting is, 
we have a responsibility because we can do it because mm -hmm. we can do it it's almost we have a duty to perform it which is to spread the word and i see myself in a lot of ways as being a preacher in mm -hmm. the art form or the guise of poetry or filmmaking mm -hmm. and acting these mm -hmm. are all uh, interfaces if you will to communicate mm -hmm. with uh yeah. this matrix you know and um i see it as my duty to to give and for example if i have food to give and there's someone that is starving it's my duty as a human being to make sure that other human being is fed and that's how i see it um mm. the kind of impact i want to have is, is i i would say more i want to do just i want to just do provoke for mm. i want to provoke change and um long after the physical is gone i want my work still to be working yeah. When I'm gone, yeah. you know, and uh, mm. that's what I want to, that's, that's the dream. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. I think one of the, my favourite things about being an artist is meeting other artists who in our separate fields or whatever are just legends. Mm. So and so, absolute legend. And nobody in the whole world knows who they are except mm. the pe person that have been affected. So the majority of the arts community yeah. are not the... Uh, the people who we see constantly mm. on the television or in the papers or, or we can buy their records or even read their books. Mm. They're the people that we meet every day who are doing the grassroots work, who are writing the world. They, they are, are writing it and they rewriting are. it and, giving, and empowering people to do it themselves. Yeah. Now, I, think, I find yeah. that really exciting. Yeah, because it's like, the thing is, I think that, you know, in modern times, we've really compartmentalised art mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know into this weird thing called entertainment yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> the strange the thing and now yes. do you know what i mean yeah. yes. 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 you know whereby art is something that's functional yeah you know it has um it has a purpose you know it it, it serves it's you know you know from weddings to funerals to um, teaching your child why you don't put your hand in the fire or Ooh. you give him a Nancy or whatever mm -hmm. it is, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All of these things, you know, you sing your child to sleep or yeah. all of, you know, like all of, yeah, all of these things, like they're, they're gifts and they're, mm. they're gifts for mm. the community and it's about enriching our lives, you know? Um, mm. And so I think, I feel like it's something that's really functional. So kind of adding on, I also want to see art back in everybody's hands. That makes yeah. me feel yeah. that entertainment is killing real art because a lot of the entertainment is not art because it's just entertainment. It's just... Reality TV, exactly. game it's, show. It, it's, I, I wanna, I'll say it like this straight. Like the, the yeah. artists, musicians, and what we see today on television or television yes. is oh. funded. A lot of it is funded crap. It's funded nonsense. Mm. And the real artists, the genuine artists who are so-called broke or poor, mm. they have real genuine art because they have to struggle to write, to type, to, to, to uh, create their craft. So um, the stuff that we're given in the so-called mainstream, because yeah. we make it the mainstream anyway, mm. yeah. they're, these, they're, what you're seeing is people being paid to rehash and to redo stuff that's mm. been done already. It's not original. But the original, the artist is original in itself, and that's why I'm wondering, Malik, if the art, the arts funding, is being cut away from the working class, as to take away the platform away from genuine artists that are going to bring new art or, or uh, real creativity, because the creativity itself is the revolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that because is, because even a, like in working in a, <coughs> in a, a well-known literature organisation running the National Slams from that, even there and in all these places, they will give internships. Mm -hmm. Internships are not paid. So who can live in London for six mm -hmm. months to a year, not be paid? Um, I certainly couldn't do right. that. So in my day, we had the dogs. Right? This, yeah. this is what I'm saying. And that's, that's how it happens. And when you, you were saying that, and you were talking about entertainment and this commoditizing of everything, it seems to go back to our original discussion to me about corporate colonialism and capitalism. And they've got us all thinking, even from our schools, yeah. it's nine o'clock, that's maths. It's 10, that's English. <laughs> and now cookery. Bones. You know, and we're all thinking in these like boxes, so it's really hard. Yeah. And even us on stage, do you feel like, you know, I don't feel like I can stand on stage without 
entertainment has to kind of be yeah. a part of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. exactly a laugh a minute, yes. you know, but, but there is. Well, this, well, the thing is, the, the, the art form, like, is always going to be a celebration and people will get stuff from yeah. it. Yeah. But that in and of itself is functional. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not, it's not just about, yeah, it's not just about, um, you know, people <clears throat> making money and art only happens here and da 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 da. Like, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be um, an energy exchange. I think the energy exchange is, port is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, like, one money, because we collectively agreed that this is how we're going to exchange energy. So I feel that the reciprocity yeah. um, must be there. Yeah, yeah. It's just the the construct that we have now, which are basically these borders. Yeah. So these people the are, borders. In the, yeah. <laughs> are, are, are in the, the industry, mm. but it doesn't mean that, um, you know, there are people, you could be, I could have sat next to people on the train who are better poets than me or better writers mm. or better actors or whatever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But for whatever reason, you know, I, I saw um, a guy working in a store and he's an amazing dancer, yes. you know? And I was like, oh, you're still dancing? And he was like, no, mate, I, I had some children and <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, wow, like he's been blessed with something that brings joy into people's lives. Yeah. And he can't spread that because of these borders. Yeah. And yeah. that's mm. where I have it. That's where I what the mm. issue. But you know, the beautiful thing and what I love about this discussion is that you provide proof and a passionate defense of the importance of the artist, you know, and the fact that being socially conscious is an essential part of your work. And I cannot thank you, Juanis, Courtney, Joel, I cannot thank you enough for being here with us. I won't let you leave though until I ask you something which for me is kind of sweet and I trust that you will like it too. Joel, what's your favorite sound? My favorite sound? Yes. Um, Somebody speaking the truth, just starting to speak for the first time. Yes. Yeah, which I'm very blessed to have experienced. I've been in classrooms where somebody hasn't spoken for a long time and they begin to speak. It's that, that little moment, it's hard to describe. Courtney, what's your favorite color? Purple. And one is your favorite word. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna be a hippie, love. Yes. <laughs> That's your favourite word. Yeah. I wanted that one. I wanted that <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. We'll bend the rules a little bit. Go ahead. Your favourite sound, your favourite sound as well. Yeah. Right? Favorite, as a wrap up. You know what? My favourite sound. Yes. It's going to sound. No, no, come with it. Come with it. I say my favourite sound is the vibration of peace. Mm, go okay. on. Oh, go on. You're going to raise it now. Yeah, no, no. Uh, no. And, and please, please, take, no, us, take us to the bridge now, no, Wanis. No, no, Take please, us to the bridge. Please, please, please. You should have done it, done it in the wrong order. The cycle's beginning now. We have please. somebody come on now. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. You just did it. You know, you know what my favourite sound is, right? Um, the, when I was in South Africa, yeah, um, the way in which... Um, the, I can't even say, Corsa people would oh. speak, yeah? Really There's something nice. about that, those clicks. Yeah, my, yeah. I, could I listen that to in Zimbabwe and I could listen. listen. Incredible. Yeah, I could just listen. That's my favorite. Yeah. It's my favorite sound. Yeah. And so viewers, you hear the sound <laughs> of passion, the sound of reason. I trust you've enjoyed the session with us today on the, our reasoning sessions. I want to thank Juan Sankara, thank Courtney you. Winston, Joel Taylor. On behalf of our creative director, Trevor Fogar Griffiths and the entire team here at Adelic.com. We trust that you are inspired and indeed thought provoked by this edition of Reasoning Sessions. Continue the conversation wherever you are throughout the globe. Continue to remain authentic. Give thanks. Stay blessed.